This is Ask GMBN Tech, uh, the Q&A format clinic show, I guess you could call it that. You ask technical related questions about your mountain bikes and any issues you have, and we'll give you the answers. Uh, get your questions in in the comments underneath. Use the hashtag, please. Ask GMBN Tech, and we'll get going. All right, this one's from Tony McNally. I've got a Shimano 8-speed cassette. Does that mean my free hub is compatible with 9, 10, and 11-speed cassettes? Um, not necessarily cassettes, but your free hub body will be compatible up to 10-speed. I think you can get an 11 on there, actually, uh, on the body. It won't be compatible with SRAM 11 or 12-speed, though. That's important to say because SRAM use their own dedicated driver body known as the XD driver. Uh, it's a very different shape, although for some hubs, you can get them to fit. So, yeah, you can get them to fit, just not with SRAM, only with Shimano. Um, yeah, there you go. All right, now it's on to Charlie Williamson. Is it possible to bodge a bleed block with, say, a piece of card or wood? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, as long as it's the same size as what a bleed block needs to be in order to hold your pistons out correctly, and as long as it's not made of material, like if the wood is too coarse, for example, it might damage those pistons. That's why bleed blocks tend to be made of nylon or plastic, because uh, they're smooth, essentially, so they can't damage anything. As long as it's the same size, absolutely you can make them out of most materials, to be fair. Um, although if it is made of something like wood, be very careful that it doesn't, or it's not too porous and doesn't absorb brake fluid because you kind of want everything around this to be as clean as possible. Um, if it does, just make sure after you've used it, before you put the brake pads in, use some brake cleaner or some isopropyl alcohol to clean the whole brake caliper. But yeah, there's absolutely no reason why you can't do that. In fact, uh, when I travel with my bike, you can get those plastic spaces that do come with your brakes for putting in between the brake pads, uh, but quite often I just use a bit of cardboard, just fold it in half and wedge it in between them. It does the same job, uh, but again, it can get oily and stuff, So, but because it's a bit of cardboard, you know, recycling, another bit next time. Job done. Okay, so this question is from Julian Hagens. Ask GMBN Tech. Hi guys, absolutely loving the show. Uh, thanks, by the way. I'm a 16 year old from Toronto, Ontario in Canada, and it's easily my favorite YouTube channel. I'll tell you what, that's, that's mega, thank you for that. Um, I bought a 2015 Specialized Rock Hopper Comp 29. I got it used for 475 Canadian dollars, and it's got Suntour uh, XCR coil forks on them. Whenever I compress them, there's a black residue that stays on the stanchions, kind of like a thin ring. Is this a sign of a low quality fork or one that needs a rebuild? Um, P.S. I forgot to mention they have a crazy amount of stiction. Sorry, Julie, your question's quite long. I've just skipped a little bit of it out there just to get to the point here. Okay, so there's a few things with this. So on any suspension fork, you do tend to get a little bit of grease, a bit of residue as you compress, and it's normally held underneath the wiper seals, and that's part of the lubricant held in the lower legs that actually makes the fork function correctly. So if it's an equal amount on both legs, then it's absolutely fine. If it's an excessive amount, there could be a problem internally. Your seals could be damaged and too much oil could be escaping, or worse, perhaps the damper on the inside could be blown. If on the other leg it's not quite as bad, then it does suggest it's a damper problem. But what I suspect is it's just the oil from under the wiper seal. Uh, so you can literally just clean this off and just monitor it. Now you do say that there's a lot of stiction in that. So stiction essentially is the friction that you can get on a suspension fork. And this typically happens when the fork is quite dry, i.e. there's not enough lower leg lube in that fork to lubricate the bushings and lubricate those seals. And the rubber seals themselves can leave black residue, and that's basically the rubber breaking down slightly from that seal. And that will firstly damage the seal, secondly it will cause stiction or friction in the fork's operation, and thirdly it can actually wear away some of the anodizing on those expensive upper legs of the fork, which are known as the stanchions. So you want to make sure that that is not the case. Now there's a few ways around this. You can do a full lower leg service to remedy this and get some oil back in there. You could do the cheats version, which essentially is get yourself some suspension lubricant and put a very small amount on top of those seals. Be careful that it doesn't go anywhere near your, your brake or your brake rotor. Uh, this is why for this I wouldn't use a spray, I'd actually use one just out of a bottle. And then compress the fork a few times and allow the oil to be pulled or ingested underneath the seals there. Push it up and down a few times and you'll see some dirt start being lifted out. Wipe that off, give it another go, wipe it off again and it should be okay. 
Now a slightly more long-term version, and this is a cheat version of the lower leg service, would be to tip your bike upside down, essentially undo the foot nuts on the bottom of the fork, slide the fork legs up very slightly so you can see into the bottom of the forks there, and put a little bit of that lubricant in both legs there. We're talking like a few drops here. Uh, put the nuts back on again and put a bike the correct way up and cycle it through and then it does the same thing except you're getting the oil directly onto the inside of the fork. Of course a proper lower leg service is the one and it is, I can assure you, very easy if you have the tools and you're comfortable doing this. So I'm going to put a link to the fork lower leg service underneath this video here so look out for that in the description. Again it's a very simple process, the forks I demonstrated it on are fairly common and most forks work on a similar principle. Uh, you might just have different foot nuts or allen key head bolts on there but the principle remains the same. Okay, so next question is from Patrick Juliton. Hi Doddy and Henry, thanks for the really informative videos. Hey, it's our pleasure. Uh, if there's any videos you want us to make, let us know in those comments. Um, I have a 2018 RockShox Lyric with 170 millimeters of travel. I've noticed that it sits quite low in its travel without any weight on it. I have to lift the fork up to reveal the, the missing five to seven millimeters. I've serviced the lowers and did the cable tie trick, but to no avail. I've read on some forums that this is normal with debonair models. We'd love to hear from you. All right, yeah, all right. So perhaps because the debonair spring is essentially a larger negative air spring, it can creep down a little bit, and that's why it feels so pattery and nice. However, five to seven mil, I mean, I think like a couple of millimeters is fairly acceptable. Um, what you want to do, so do a lower leg service, and you actually want to pull the air leg uh, or the air tube straight out of there when you do that process. So you'll need a set of circlip pliers in addition to the other tools you'll need for the lower leg service and take care pulling out that uh, air tube from the fork and basically give it a clean out on the inside and the thing that can happen is the grease that's put into basically around the quad seal and around the o-ring on that air tube as it slides in and also around the threads on the top cap that's got the shred of one. sometimes a bit of that grease can migrate onto the inside of the fork and there's a little dimple that when you basically pressurise the, the positive chamber, it travels into a negative one. Sometimes it gets a little bit blocked and the air doesn't transfer that well and that can basically account for that. So give that a try. It sounds like you're quite comfortable doing a lower leg service uh, and hopefully that will improve things slightly. But a uh, great fork and that debonair spring is awesome. Uh, next up's from Corey York. Um, I've seen your name before. I don't know if it's in the comments or not. It's familiar. Um, hi from West Virginia, loving the show. I've got a 2016 Fuji Reveal 1.1 and it's currently 2x10 and I want to convert it to 1x10. It's got Dior cranks on it, so a Shimano Dior. And I've read I'll need some spacers, 3mm spacers, on the chain ring to keep the chain in line. Is this true? I also have a Sunrace 1136 and a 3824 up front if that makes any difference. What sizes will I need to keep the 1x as close to that as possible? Um, okay, we'll start. So the 1136 out back, um, you can obviously just keep that. There's no need to replace that. Um, you might want a slightly lower gear on there, i.e. the 36. You might want something slightly bigger. Uh, but if I was you, I'd just wear it out first. Save yourself the cash in the short term. Uh, wait until it's worn out, then replace it. Um, you know, really, it's the best thing to do, unless you can get any cash for it. You haven't said what condition it's in. If it's in great condition, then you could take that whole lot off and sell that second hand. Um, as far as the chambering, so you've got a 38 and a 24, so um, probably a 32, 34, you know, depending on how hilly it is around where you are. Um, I run up to a 34, I tend to do 34 in summer and a 32 in winter, basically, just because it needs slightly lower gear after the way I ride. Um, as far as the spacing goes, yeah, I think it's between two and three millimetres you need to space out the outer ring position on the inside of those tabs and then spaced, i.e. to put the ring basically directly in the centre of where those two chain rings currently are. And the reason for that is to give yourself the smoothest possible chain line. So you want that chain to be lining up with the centre of your block at the back. So it's got, it's almost equidistant from the smallest um, gear, basically the highest gear, and to the largest gear, which is your lowest gear. That means the chain will operate smoothly. Now, a few chambering manufacturers used to make offset chain rings. I'm not sure off the top of my head without checking, but Renthal used to make one to convert two by to one by, and it's essentially a chain ring that had um, built-in spaces as part of it. So you literally fit it like a normal chain ring with the bolts, and it would be in the correct position. Fairly sure Race Face have done one in the past as well. They may still do them, and I'm sure some other brands will still do them. However, you can just do it with spacers. It's not really that much of an issue. It's very easy to do, um, and a great thing to do to your bike. 
but my personal advice would be unless you've got an itch to do it right this second with the chain of cassette perhaps try and wear them out first just to save yourself a bit of cash because otherwise you'll be putting them aside and not using it Oh, well there we go hopefully you've enjoyed this little tour around bath uh, and a little q a session for ask gmbn tech as well any questions you've got use that hashtag ask gmbn tech get them in the comments underneath uh, hit the uh, like button hit the subscribe button and hit the bell bing bing a uh, couple more videos for you right there